Welcome to the Art of Marketing Operations, a Taylor podcast. Here you can grow your knowledge about marketing operations, listen to ideas and strategies to help you scale, grow, and optimize your efficiency, drive your speed to market, and enrich your work life. Let's get to it. Welcome to the Art of Marketing Operations, a Taylor podcast. I'm Glenn Bottomley, and today my guest is Elena Hengel, Vice President of Marketing at Marketing Architects, a full-service, all-inclusive television agency that rebuilt the traditional agency model to help brands drive profitable growth. Thanks for joining us today, Elena. Thanks for having me. Well, so Elena, TV advertising is a huge industry, and Marketing Architects is an expert and a thought leader in the space. So can you please explain where the value in TV advertising is and why is it such a strong medium and has been for so long now? Yeah, of course. I think I could probably go on forever about (laughs) TV and how wonderful it is. We're obviously pretty big fans. It's all that we do as an agency. But for the interest of, of time and your audience, if I had to narrow it down to three main reasons, I'd start with TV's reach is so incredibly valuable. 80% of Americans watch TV on a daily basis, uh, 22% watch for more than four hours a day. And I think with all of the media fragmentation, it's not easy to reach an audience um, effectively today. And TV just, it has an ability to give you that reach that can help you build your brand and drive mental availability. And now you have both linear traditional cable, and then you also have streaming. So there's just a lot of different forms of TV and a lot of ways to get in front of that audience. Second, I would say that TV advertising has an ability to deliver an emotional message. Just the fact that it's video, you're able to connect with your audience in a different way. You're able to tell your story in a very emotional way. And I think that stands out from a lot of digital channels or just more static advertising. It can build your brand in a different way. And then third, I'd say TV has this ability to build your brand and drive sales at the same time. And it does both really effectively. For our clients, we even see the same commercial can build brand metrics and also cause a consumer to respond immediately to that TV commercial. And for some of our clients, TV's ROI even rivals social, which is something that I still find amazing and surprising. So I think it's hard to find a channel that can do both. It's sort of a perfect match for a performance marketer and a brand marketer. And don't you also think too that you know there's almost a a, a romance to, to 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 television? It is such a powerful medium that we all experience from youth, you know that you know we remember those connections, those our favorite shows, those memorable commercials, the connections that we make to new brands and discovery of new topics, themes, products, services, etc there is such a view to the world through there. And so, you know, that has to play a component, you know, to to how powerful the medium is as well. Would you agree? Oh, definitely. I think that we all can remember those commercials from our childhood. And I think that also reminds me of TV's ability to have a, a cultural imprinting effect. So you typically, when you watch a TV commercial, you know that other people are seeing the same thing. It can add legitimacy to brands, unlike other channels. And we all have this idea in our heads that if you advertise on TV, it's expensive. Your brand must be legitimate. And then you can think about when you're watching the NFL football game and you have a room full of people, you get all those eyeballs on your commercial. I mean, it, you don't have the same thing with a Facebook ad. You're just hitting one-to-one with a person. And that can still be valuable. But having that group attention on a commercial, it's one of those intangible things about TV that is hard to find with other marketing channels. Yeah, certainly after the Super Bowl, you know, I I know that one of the things that I always do with my staff is just, all right, what was your favorite ad? (laughs) You know, what was, what was the key takeaway? What's the most memorable? And to your point, there's that shared experience. And so that has to be probably one of the opportunities uh, that is available to marketers when setting up TV advertising. But I would imagine that there's also challenges as well, um, you know, in, in, in the sense of, you know, how you're actually crafting that, uh, you know, the, uh, the memorability uh, of, of an ad. So what are some of those opportunities and challenges when setting up TV advertising as 
a communication channels uh, for a marketing operations team? Yeah, so there's TV is amazing, but there's a reason why there's not um, as many brands on television as on digital. It is very expensive typically to get onto TV. Now there's more options with things like streaming, but that initial cost can be difficult. It's also very hard to budget correctly for a TV campaign. And the reason for that comes to another challenge, which is TV is traditionally hard to measure. It's hard to attribute that direct sale to TV. You need to have multiple attribution models in place. And just that TV measurement, I think, can prevent a lot of marketers from testing the channel because they need to prove to the C-suite the impact of TV. And if you don't have your test set up correctly, it can be hard to read because a lot of TV's greatest power comes from someone seeing your commercial and then a few days later seeing a Facebook ad and then remembering, oh, I saw this brand on TV, I'll, I'll go buy from them. So you really need to have your measurement set up well. And that brings me to another thing that a marketing operations team can help with, which is using data effectively. There's so much data that you can use for a TV campaign from your using your first party data to find audiences to just ingesting the website visitors that come from TV. So we definitely have the most success when we're working with a team that really has their data organized. They really understand their customer. And then we can come up with a very specific recommendation. So you're not left wondering, how did TV do? The only thing, that's the worst thing that could happen is you spend all this money and you don't even know if it if it worked or not. And unfortunately, we hear that story from a lot of advertisers after they test TV. Mm -hmm. I could definitely see that that is a challenge. I, you mentioned streaming earlier, and that does sort of bring a question to my mind because I, as with any medium, there are obviously opportunities and, and challenges. But from a streaming perspective, do you find that streaming um, provides more opportunities? Because on one hand, how many times do I, you know, from my home computer, uh, you know, visiting a website for a product and all of a sudden I see a streaming ad for that product, uh, you know, on my television, you know, through IP identification or, or somehow uh, geos uh, lo locating me and from my uh, IP address from my computer or my network. But the challenge is it must also be, you know, are there advertisements actually in a series or a, a, a show, et cetera? Some do, some don't is what's, what's been your experience on, you know, the opportunities and challenges of streaming? Yeah, that's, there's a, there's a lot of them. So we're very excited about streaming. I think a lot of marketers are because it does solve that uh, forever challenge of TV, which is measurement. It's easier to measure streaming because you're right. You can target people by their IP, IP address. It's easier to set up response mechanisms to measure the success of your campaign, but you're right. That's not without challenges. The, biggest challenge we see right now in streaming is cost because you're right, there's not as much ad inventory on streaming. A lot of it's not ad supported and that drives up the cost of whatever inventory is available. Uh, yeah, because there are fewer spots and therefore, hence, you know, it's yep. just much more expensive. Right, more premium. And another challenge is you would think that the measurement would be very straightforward, but I'm sure you share accounts with people. I'm sure, you know, you might share a Hulu account or a Netflix account and you might be paying a premium to, you know, say target my dad, but you're actually, you know, you're targeting me. So it's not always as straightforward as people think it is. And we've also found that you have to be careful when measuring the success of streaming. There can be some over attribution there. And a lot of these streaming platforms, they're learning how to set up ad supported platforms and that can make things a little bit complex too. So we're very excited about streaming. Our clients do use streaming to reach those incremental audiences, people that you can't reach on linear television, very specific audiences, but definitely um, still using using a combination of linear and streaming. I don't think the channel's all the way there yet. And I think a lot of marketers might dismiss linear TV thinking that their audience isn't there, but the majority of ad viewing still takes place on linear television. Mm -hmm, precisely. Uh, now, so how then do you feel that TV advertising can then work alongside other mediums, uh, you know, in, term, in in marketing to maximize reach and ultimately the impact on, on, on buyers. Yeah. So we are a TV only agency. We're big fans of TV, but we know the value of TV combined with other marketing channels. There's been plenty of research showing when you combine TV with other channels, that's when you have the greatest impact. I think 
the two most powerful that have been proven are TV and online video, things like YouTube, and then TV and paid search. But when our clients launch TV, we like to say it rises all boats in their marketing mix. We see improvements on social. Um, we see their Google tax go down because more people are going directly to their website. One of our personal favorites is direct mail. We see direct mail results improve. When you launch television, we work with quite a few advertisers who are more traditional catalog brands and that combination of TV and print can really drive spectacular results. So we love TV, but we definitely wouldn't work with somebody who's only using television. It's when you use the combination that it's really powerful. Mm -hmm. Well, and when we chatted before, uh, you know, I know one of the things that you talked about was contextual marketing and behavioral marketing. So can, can you just define um, the similarities and differences between those two? Yeah, of course. I'm really obsessed with this topic recently. It's become more popular with different debates about consumer privacy. And so contextual targeting, that would be targeting ads based on contextually relevant content. So say I'm Bass Pro Shops, I might put an advertisement on the fishing channel because, hey, it makes sense. If someone's interested in uh, fishing, they might be interested in what I'm selling. But behavioral targeting, that delivers ads based on someone's historical browsing data. So for example, I might be on a phishing blog. They tag me with a cookie, and then I'm later retargeted with a display ad on a news site for a phishing rod. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then which do you think of those two between contextual marketing and behavioral? Is there, in your experience, a better option for, say, a B2B company versus a B2C uh, company? So I really think that you should consider both. I was going to say, um, or, could, or could both apply? Yes, I I definitely think so. I I think that behavioral targeting it can be very effective when it's when it's used wisely, and there are some downsides with it. But I I think that you should consider both, and maybe one consideration with B two B versus B two C would be some of the privacy challenges with behavioral targeting. The government's more focused on consumers first before businesses. So if you're a B two C brand, you might want to be more careful. But we we do both with our clients, but we have found that contextual can be overlooked by marketers. I think that we've all gotten so spoiled by, I can target the exact right person at the right time for the right price. But a lot of the time, it's just simple math. If you target contextually, you're paying less, you're reaching more people, um, and it just makes it worth it. You have that positive spill. We give the example of, say, you're shooting free throws and you're up against LeBron James. You have 100 shots. He has one shot. Who's going to make more baskets? Like, well, you know, you're probably going to make more baskets, even though you're not, you don't have the skill level of LeBron James. So contextual, it can become simple math for advertisers. And you don't run into some of the challenges with privacy and just all the things that are happening right now with more behavioral, you know, tracking based advertising. Yeah, well, and I'd like to expand on something that you just chatted about, about the allure of this precise user targeting and, and precise market targeting. And so, you know, this preciseness has become so popular today, particularly in, in social media and social media advertising. And so, you know, clearly, and you just uh, alluded to it, while precise targeting obviously can provide tremendous value to a marketer, but there's some some downsides to it as well. You know, as you just mentioned, there's opportunity costs, missed opportunities. Um, so what's your uh, perspective or read on sort of that um, allure in your sort of chasing that, you know, the power of one, the consumer getting that one individual buyer. Um, but there's also a dark side to that and, and something that you're missing. What's, what's been your view or experience? I think that, again, it, it can be very tempting to look at marketing that way and, yes, get very fixated on targeting that exact right person at the exact time. But when you do that, you're I just think you're leaving a lot on the table, even just putting aside the questions of, is it morally right to target people that way? You know, What's the, the government going to do about it? Putting that aside, we know that brands grow through reach. They grow by building mental availability. There is value in someone knowing your brand other than that exact decision maker because lots of people influence purchases. And I think when marketers, we get so focused on that one person, 
you're often leaving opportunity on the table. And that doesn't mean targeting everyone. You know, that doesn't make any sense either. But I think that Mark Ritson calls it sophisticated mass marketing. I think more marketers could benefit from that. And your audience too, it, it might be broader than you might think. One story that uh, we like to tell is as an agency, we used to sell stuffed animals. They were called stuffies. And we were originally targeting parents because we thought, okay, well, parents are the ones who are buying these toys. And um, we ended up finding out that it was actually the grandparents. And we found that out through TV. We started getting reviews and there were these grandparents were buying these toys for their grandkids. And we ended up taking that information, changing our media plans. We made sure let's continue to hit these networks with older audiences. And we even made a really cute commercial about a little kid saying, thank you, grandma, for my stuffy. And so for us, TV helped us grow that brand just through reach alone. But we never would have known that if we were only targeting that one specific end customer. Yeah, that is, that's a, that's a fantastic uh, use case and, and uh, case study. So thank you for sharing that. I, I love when you find sort of those stories, those unintended consequences and, uh, and ways that products fit. Um, I remember reading of, there was a, I believe it was in Japan where, uh, or no, China, excuse me, there was a uh, a tablet product that was brought to market uh, specifically for seniors. And, uh, and this product was focused on um, helping a senior, very big buttons, easy to use, uh, you know, and, and, but yet the company who created it kept on finding that their call center and their customer service lines were being, you know, called multiple times a day. And, uh, and they had Thought, thought that they had created a, a flawless product. And, but the problem was, was that, and this was for, you know, uh, older people and uh, people potentially in assisted living or uh, senior living homes, et cetera. But when they were calling in, they were actually not calling in for any technical problem. They were actually calling in to simply visit. Uh, and they were oh. just, vi- they were just visiting. They just wanted to visit. It was a, it was a lifeline out to the, to, to someone. And so to your point, you, they never would have known that, uh, had they not done a little bit more of that research, understanding the, you know, how is the user actually using that product? So you're a stuffy, uh, uh, example that's, you know, who, who's actually your buyer and what's, what are they actually doing with the product? It's really a fascinating, uh, sort of discussion and, 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 uh, and amount of research you can do. Excellent. So then related to the, uh, back to the precise targeting then is, um, for someone who is interested in doing that, uh, or who let's potentially is doing that now, and they are trying to consider, uh, moving into TV advertising, uh, maybe they're not doing TV advertising today, either on broadcast television or on streaming there, but they're exploring it or they're thinking about it what would be some advice that you would give to that brand or that marketing team uh, that they should consider uh, as they're looking at television advertising in whatever form uh, as a form of, of uh, promotion for their brand? Yeah, I would say if you're a brand who's been doing digital advertising, if you're preparing for TV for the first time, I would say that TV is complicated. So you're going to want to get it right from the start. And I, I, to prove that, I'll say as an agency, we have an all-inclusive model. So we actually invest in everything our clients need to succeed on TV outside of media. We believe it's so important to have your message right, to have the, you know, the right creative, the right measurement in place, just having your data organized. That's so important to TV's success. I, I hate to see marketers testing TV and not setting it up in the right way and then deeming it a failure. I mean, TV is very complicated if you have the wrong creative message you're not going to succeed if you have the wrong call to action. Um, one thing too we see all the time is most TV commercials, they're not actually seen, they're heard. Think about when you, there's a commercial going on, you're walking out of the room and whenever I see a commercial and there's no VO, not even at the end saying the brand name, I just think, oh my goodness, you're wasting so many impressions. So just being set up for success and that starts with really understanding your audience what's going to resonate with them. Um, That's where all of our campaigns start because then you can use that data to make sure you're targeting effectively. Because even though, you know, traditional linear television doesn't have behavioral targeting, there's still a lot of targeting you can do. You can target by geo. Um, If you have a female focused brand, you're going to skew to female networks. I mean, 
there's still a lot of testing you can do, a lot of targeting. Streaming obviously offers you all these new capabilities. So it comes down to just understanding your customer. I think if I had to give any advice, it would be just to be as prepared as possible before you spend a lot of money in something like television. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, and I'd like to come back to something that you mentioned a few moments ago, and you were talking about uh, direct mail and uh, in specifically the power of connecting direct mail um, to television and television advertising. Uh, so what are some of your experiences uh, of that uh, communication medium, direct mail, or any other uh, uh, medium or, or physical marketing impression. Um, you know, how should marketing uh, operations executives incorporate physical marketing and the physical marketing impression with their digital marketing, their contextual marketing, their behavioral marketing, their television advertising, et cetera? Talk to us a little bit about your experiences and best practices about how should a brand connect and integrate all of those together? Mm-hmm. Well, first I would say, I think integrating them is a great idea just because as I said before, the the performance is going to lift when you're combining marketing channels. But for our clients, we work with them to make sure that your messaging is aligned. Um, if you can have you know a direct mail message that calls out your TV campaigns, even sometimes we have an offer on TV that you end up sending someone something on the mail, just having that connection for customers so that they're recognizing your brand you're having a consistent message. That's all That's all important when you're combining both of them. But we love direct mail. We work with, again, a lot of marketers that run direct mail campaigns. And I think that it gives people a different impression of your brand. Just like TV is a different experience of your brand, direct mail is the same thing, especially in B2B. I don't think enough people send direct mail. It, it really is coming back and it stands out so much just to have that different impression of your brand and tell a different story. Unfortunately, a lot of digital marketing impressions, just they go unseen. They don't leave the same sort of impact of getting something in the mail and and seeing it. We actually do direct mail as an agency too. And we're just, we're huge fans. Our founder started off with um, sending catalogs. And so we just, we we love direct mail and we even look for advertisers that are already, already doing it because it can pair well with television. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's excellent. That's excellent. Well, Elena, before we wrap up today's episode, what is the main takeaway that you want to share to help understand the challenges facing marketing operations executives today? I would say let's not make marketing more complicated than it needs to be. You know, marketing is complicated enough, but there is research on what's proven to work. There are marketing practices and marketing principles that have been proven to work for you and your brand, things like contextual things like TV, things like direct mail, it it doesn't have to be so complicated. And sometimes it's okay to lean into channels that we know work, even if they're not the shiniest and, and the newest channels out there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Brilliant insights. Well, that wraps up this episode of the Art of Marketing Operations. Thank you so much for joining us today, Elena. Thank you for having me. Well, until next time, stay safe and take care. Thank you for listening to The Art of Marketing Operations, brought to you by Taylor. Don't forget to hit subscribe in your favorite podcast player. If you enjoyed this episode, please rate, review, and share. Until next time.